Hi, Ed Skidmore here. Got a word for the day. Just a thought from God's Word. About a week ago, my wife asked me, what would you like for your birthday? I thought a minute, and then I said, you know what I'd really like? I'd like to pay off the mortgage on this house and finally own it 100%. And so we got to looking at what it would take and found out we had enough money to just pay it off completely. What a joy it was to finally take that payment book and throw it in the trash can. And for the last week or so, we've just been celebrating the fact that this house is 100% ours. Kind of leads me to think about that subject of debt. I'm told that Mark Twain, during his lifetime, went from periods of wealth to poverty and back again. And it was during those periods of poverty that Mark Twain would go to the bankers, see if he could get a loan. Well, unfortunately, his attempts at getting loans did not increase his affection for the banking fraternity. In fact, he defined a banker as a man who would gladly loan you an umbrella when the sun's shining and then demand it back the minute it started to rain. It was Twain who told the story of a bank president that he went to hoping for a loan and, and the president did something kind of strange. He, he had a glass eye that some famous person had made for him and it was made so well that it looked very much like a real human eye. He was quite proud of it. And so here's what he told Mark Twain. He said, you're coming to me for a $5,000 loan. I'll tell you what I'll do. If you can figure out which of these two eyes is my glass eye, then I'll give you the loan. Mark Twain glanced up and he said, well, that's easy. He said, it's the left one. He said, that's the only eye that looks like it has a glint of human kindness in it. You know, uh, when we look at this issue of debt, the Bible has something to say about that. In Romans 13, verse 7 and 8, Paul says this. He says, Give everyone what you owe him. If you owe taxes, pay taxes. If revenue, then revenue. If respect, then respect. If honor, then honor. And then he said, Let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. For he who loves his fellow man has fulfilled the law. You know, it's a wonderful relief to come to the end of a financial obligation, but there are some obligations that never end. The Christian obligation we have to show kindness and mercy can never be paid in full. In fact, it is our continuous display of love and kindness to others, both in the faith and out of the faith, that basically enables us to pass on to others the grace that God first showed to us. And God has promised to us that He will grant to us a sufficiency of grace so that we, in turn, can be generous in our actions toward others. 2 Corinthians 9.8 talks about that, and it's that same passage that warns that if we sow sparingly, we shall also reap sparingly. I think we're pretty wise as individuals and as folks in the church to realize that uh, we should keep biblical principles like that in mind. Oh, it's a wonderful Wonderful thing to pay off a financial obligation and to relieve that burden of debt. But I don't believe we'll ever be able to repay the debt of love and kindness to others. And I'm confident that God is more than willing to send people your way who need such love and kindness. I suspect we should each review how it is that we've been paying this payment of debt that we owe, the debt of love and kindness to others. I want to ask you today, will you commit to keep current 
on your debt of love and kindness to others? Give that a thought as you enter into this day. And I hope this will be a great day for you. Thank you.